These 36 dramatic situations are every element that is in any story anywhere. And a lot of people said, that's insane. I could come up with way more. And they tried to come up with a list and they couldn't even get to 24. They were like, actually, it's better than I thought. Jeff, can you give us an overview of the 36 dramatic situations? The 36 dramatic situations is really a brainstorming tool. It works with elements that are common in storytelling, like madness, disaster, ambition, those types of things. It was created by an Italian playwright named Carlo Gazzi in the 1700s, and it was endorsed by Goethe and Schiller. And on the strength of those endorsements, it hung around for about 150 years until a guy named George Pulte turned it into a book in 1916. And then it picked up some steam again. But it's, it's unknown by many people. And I've met a lot of people who said they had the book but could never make heads or tails out of it. It's, it's basically what Gatsi said was that all stories consist of these basic 36 human emotional conflicts. And there are things like ambition, madness, conflict with a god, the necessity of sacrificing loved ones. And it's very similar in nature to the periodic table of elements in chemistry, where, you know, carbon, hydrogen, all that stuff. So with the periodic table of elements, you could describe anything in this room quite completely from one point of view. Like this table is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, whatever. All the elements that are in it, you can describe it quite completely from that one point of view. That's only one point of view, but that's getting right at the elements that are in it. And in storytelling, it's the same thing where you can say, okay, this story has madness, conflict with a god, vengeance taken for kindred upon kindred. Um, and there's different, so different active elements in any given story, which is useful because it helps you when you're starting out with a story where you can, like for instance, let's look at your Derek story idea again. So we'd be looking at what would be, let me just get my, book here because it's easy to go down the one sheet oh, great. for these. So <clears throat> here's a, a list of the here's a list of the 36 dramatic situations just listed simply. So looking at it in terms of Derek's story, so deliverance, rescuing or being rescued, crime pursued by vengeance. Pursuit, disaster, revolt, daring enterprise, the enigma, the riddle, or the mystery, obtaining, madness. He may be like losing his mind as being pressed into this dilemma, into like, what do I do here? I'm in love with her. She's offering me a life of adventure, but I have to betray my most core values. But are those core values based on something that were real, or was I snookered into guarding criminals? I don't know. I'm losing my mind. These are all just story possibilities. Some of it is like, some of what I was doing were elements that are already active in the story idea before it's even touched. You wanna to see what you've got. It's like taking inventory. Like what are the elements that are already active in it? And there may be a lot more than you thought there were, which is good. Um, Self-sacrifice for an ideal all sacrificed for a passion, the necessity of sacrificing loved ones, is he gonna to have to give her up? Rivalry of superior and inferior, that's always a good one because it's so subjective. Of like, who's the superior and who's the inferior? And it's completely point of view sensitive. And it can even flicker back and forth of who has the upper hand in any given situation. Uh, discovery of the dishonor of a loved one, if he's finding out that she is you know, a criminal. Obstacles to love is very active in this story, but before it's even touched. An enemy loved, falling in love with someone who turns out to be your enemy. Or enemy love can be fascination with an enemy. Um, or coming to understand your enemy. 
or falling in love with your enemy, that kind of thing. Ambition is very central in this story because Derek is stuck in this rut and he has ambitions for more, but he doesn't know how to get there, and she may awaken ambition in him. Or he may have a curious lack of ambition, like, why don't I care that I'm stuck in this rut? Or why don't I care that she's dragging me down this weird road? So it can be the, the very absence of one of these situations. Like you, if you look at a character's ambition, it may be that their ambition is wildly out of proportion and getting them in trouble, or they could have utterly no ambition, which is out of proportion for a given situation. It's curious and like, why does this person genuinely not care which way they go? So it's like it can be the presence or absence of these things too that can be suggestive. These are really suggestive elements for brainstorming. So you can see that some of what I'm doing here is as I'm going down the list and I'm thinking about this story, it's helping with the what if. I'm seeing what is already there before the story was ever even touched, the elements that it showed up with. And what if his ambition to forge a wildly new life for himself with her is something that explodes in him like he's realizing how dead his life had been before because he was just, even though he was dissatisfied with the job in many ways, he was still just nose to the grindstone, numb, plodding ahead. And he's like, how did I ever live like that for years and years? I couldn't go back to another second of that. I'd blow my brains out. It's like, yeah, she's trouble, but I can't go back to nothing. I can't go back to an emotional vacuum anymore. I kind of stuffed myself into that to forge ahead, but I don't fit in that room anymore. Conflict with a god, that's always interesting because it doesn't necessarily have to have any kind of connotation, any kind of religious connotation. It, conflict with a god suggests a religious connotation, but it's just anytime there's something going up against a, a bigger power, it could be you versus the neighborhood bully. It could be trying to get, you know, something done against City Hall. Uh, so that it's, these are very flexible. The less literally you take these, the more actual use you can make of them. So you want to have a poetic or metaphoric frame of mind as you look at these. You don't want to be stuck with their actual definitions at all. If you look at one of these things, even if it's not a valid chain of logic that you look at one of these things and it gives you 10 ideas, those 10 ideas are what's important. This is just a catalyst. In chemistry, a catalyst is something that you throw into a chemical mix and it creates a reaction even though the original catalyst stays the same. So even if this triggers, makes you think of something that happened to you as a kid, which makes you think of a weird possibility for your story, which triggers dynamic possibilities for the ending you've been stuck on, it doesn't matter how this triggered a chain of thought that got you there. Their job is to throw gasoline on the fire and trigger stuff. And that's, that's its only function, really. It's just a brainstorming tool. It's just to expose you to the elements that are already active in your story, even if you hadn't noticed that already, and to expose you to possibilities that you wouldn't have thought of in 20 lifetimes, things that you ne would never have occurred to you, that all of a sudden are like, wow, that could really tweak my third act. I've been dying for something like this. You know, it's just like, it's, it's throwing hand grenades into your story idea. Erroneous judgment is very central in this story. Look how big it is before you touch anything. Because he's like, he's looking at her going, am I crazy? Or is she like the most exciting thing in the history of mankind? Or am I like ready for a freaking straitjacket? And like her too, you know, it's like, I don't even know which way my head's screwed on anymore. And like the things that I'm contemplating doing with her and overturning my job and committing treason and blah, blah. It's like, I don't know whether to shoot myself or run off with her and have 20 kids. It's like, I don't know what I'm thinking anymore. 
recovery of a lost one? Is he going to get his own sense of self back? Loss of loved ones? Is he going to lose her? Is he losing himself? Is he losing his sense of honor? So these are like you want to have a really flexible frame of mind when you look at them because you'll get so much more out of them. It's like the wrench doesn't have to fit the bolt head exactly if it'll turn it. You know, even if it kind of fits and it, it'll turn it, that's all you need. You're just trying to advance your story or to see more deeply into it because you're penetrating into the inner elements that constitute your story. This tool is really useful when you're starting a story from scratch because say you're riding on a bus and you hear the two people in front of you talking and it's a whacked out conversation and you're kind of listening in because it's so interesting and one of them says something and you're like, that would make an amazing screenplay. Holy crap, you rush home and you're like, boom, oh my God, and you just go on a mile a minute. That's a great time to go to the 36 dramatic situations because you're exploding with ideas. And if you look down the list of the 36, you'd be like, that's already in there. That's already in there. I didn't know that's in there, but boy, is that potent. And could that be in there? That would really whack it out in a completely dangerous way or make it more hilarious or whatever the story is going. It's like, God, that is pure dynamite. And it's like your head's already exploding with ideas and you're tossing explosive elements. You're playing mad scientist with explosive elements. And you may hit one of them and you're like, that can't be. Or could it? And you'd be like, that's scary. That's truly terrifying. I, I don't even dare think that. But you can't get away from it. You're like, okay, well, what if I did do that? And you're like, so it may trigger a hundred ideas. It's like one of them can give you a cascade of ideas. Like you can barely write them all down. You're already cascading with ideas. And this is throwing gasoline on the fire. You're throwing explosive elements into the mix playing what if. And so if that one idea gives you 10 ideas and each of those gives you 10 ideas, get all that stuff down on paper. That's what's important. That thing doesn't mean anything. It just got you thinking. So it's a extremely valuable brainstorming tool in part because you're being exposed to one complete spectrum of ideas. Because where the idea originally came from, Gatsi said, this, these 36 dramatic situations are every element that is in any story anywhere. And a lot of people said, that's insane. I could come up with way more. And they tried to come up with a list and they couldn't even get to 24. They were like, actually, it's better than I thought. And then Schiller and Goethe both said, this is amazing. And so it just hung around. And it's, it's just a tool. It's just one complete spectrum of ideas that you can whip out and use to trigger ideas for your story and to see elements in it that you hadn't noticed so that you're going, wow, this idea was deeper and more complex than I thought at first glance. There's more going on there than I noticed at first, which is great because then you've got better material. You've got more to work with. If you're doing a TV series, you're like exploding with seasons and, you know, cliffhangers and characters. These things can suggest characters. They can suggest resolution. They can complicate dilemmas. But it's just one complete spectrum of possible ideas. So it's not the be all and end all. It's not the only place to look for story ideas. It's just one tool. And not only is it useful when you're starting out on an idea, but it's useful to take a quick run through the one sheet every now and then. Just like partway through your script, you may go back and look through it and go, oh, crime pursued by vengeance. That's emerging as a much more substantial aspect of the story. And I hadn't really thought it through yet, but so it can, it can just shake things loose or help you solve things you've been wrestling with or expose you to possibilities that might never have occurred to you 
or help you see that this element is very active in the story if you hadn't noticed it yet. And then when you get stuck at different parts of the story where you're really stuck on your third act or something, going back through it can shake things loose, clarify things, open up possibilities, help you see things that are in it that you hadn't noticed before, that kind of thing. So it's a, it's really an explosive brainstorming tool. And you want to have broad flexibility with it, a real sense of play, not feel trapped by any of it. It doesn't dictate anything to you. It doesn't say this has to be in there. And even if at the beginning of the story you were like, wow, ambition is right at the nucleus of this story, by the time you've worked on it for a while, you may come back and look at it again and be like, ambition doesn't even matter anymore. It's like, I thought that was huge, but it's grown and changed so much. So you're not, it's, it's just, it's just like getting blown in the air by explosives at per certain points in the development process to shake things loose, trigger ideas, help crystallize things, clarify things, simplify things, complicate things. And that's all part and parcel of the normal storytelling process anyway. This is just some good chemicals to throw in there that are like fertilizer or clarifying agents or complicators or clarifiers. So you see it in super clarity all of a sudden. Like It can take a while, spend time with the story for quite a while before you get true clarity with it. Like... Um, Sidney Pollack, when they were working on Tootsie, spent a long time trying to figure out what the story's really about. And it wasn't until it finally dawned on him that becoming a woman made a man out of Michael Dorsey that all of a sudden it like crystallized. He's like, ah, now I know in really simple terms, that's what the story's about. And he said, I went back and looked at every scene and like, how does this scene work with clarify, amplify, solidify the idea that becoming a woman makes a man out of Michael Dorsey. And he said it helped a lot in terms of working with the crew, working with the actors, his own understanding of it. And he said, it doesn't mean the story is going to be good. It just means that I know what it's about. And that helps me so much as a director. 